Hello and welcome to this video in the Lockdown Learning Series where we're going to take a look at some of the features that Complete Control gives you which aren't available in Cubase Elements. So the one thing in particular I'm thinking of is an arpeggiator. So while in the step input uh, and to a degree rhythm first then pitch uh, video showed you how to emulate what an arpeggiator did to a degree, this is a real-time arpeggiator function which is as part of Complete's control. So it's probably best if I just show you. So let's just create another complete control track. And let's load up. In fact, I'm going to pick, specifically pick, uh, let's pick Microprism and let's see what Synth Misc gives us. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so that's just that micro prism sound and that would, that's just going to be a vehicle for what we're going to want to do today. So what I want to look at is this feature here. So you've got these three notes and when you click this, this section appears here. So the first thing I want to do is look at the ARP section. So you click on ARP and it's not turned on by default. So you kind of think, oh, turning that on would have, or clicking that would have turned that on. But in fact, you've got to click in here and that turns on the arpeggiator. So as soon as you do this, your normal notes start getting arpeggiated. So I'm just pressing one key on my keyboard. So in fact, I'm gonna show you on the on-screen keyboard. So if I press a C major chord, so Q, E, and T to give you C, E, and G. Go up an octave. So we can see now we've got that arpeggiated, automated playing of those sounds. We've got a few features we can change here. So we've got different modes, so note repeat, which can just be useful when you don't want to have to repeat notes. Um, arpeggiator does the same thing. So note repeat, we'll do it with a chord. Okay, so there I'm playing a chord. That again, I'll show you on the keyboard. Whereas if you're in arpeggiator mode and you play that, you get an arpeggio. So note repeat can be useful. I'm being slightly uh, churlish there. Let's turn the on-screen keyboard off again. Uh, type is up or down, so if I play an arpeggio, in fact, I'm going to slow this down to make it a little bit easier to understand. And down is up, so slower is up, which is slightly counterintuitive to me, but there we go. So that's up, down, up and down, and then how you played it. So in this case, I played it up, and there I played it down. So I just played the top note first. So that's useful chord mode, which is like note repeat. And we've reached the bottom. So I'm just gonna to stick to up. Rate, we've already seen. So you can change that. And sequence. So this is uneven rhythms of sequences, etc. And you can add in swing as well, which is quite useful. So a lot of stuff, if you add in a few percent of swing, it just it gives it a bit more life. So in fact, just gonna turn that sequence off. So you can hear that's that's much more groovy like that. So just, you know, a few percent of swing will make all the difference in terms of the way that it, it sounds. Number of octaves. etc., And then the dynamic. velocity effectively and how long the notes last so by default they're 100 percent of the time so you've you've got solid notes but if you put it down to 50 percent effectively here you've got half of this 16th so a 30 second note of note and then a 30 second note of silence so you get that more staccato sound And obviously this can all interact with the sound that you're using as well. So with some tweaking, particularly of things like filter settings, etc., and envelopes, you can get a lot of interest out of this or an entire career in the case of Tangerine Dream. So that's the arpeggiator side of things, which I'm going to turn off. There's another one which is quite useful, which is scale. So scale mode uh, emulates something which is available in the full version of Cubase where you have the input transformer uh, and it can fix what you're playing to a particular scale. So in this case, I'm gonna turn that on and you can see here we're set to C major, okay? So again, I'm gonna play, go back to the keyboard. So if I play a C major scale, 
that works. But if I play the C sharp, it's the same note when I play a C sharp as when I play a D. So this is, if you've got terrible keyboard skills, I've got terrible keyboard skills, so, you know, we're all in this together. Uh, if if you've got bad keyboard skills, by turning this on, it can effectively correct your mistakes. It may not correct them in the way you'd want them to be, but at least they will fit in the key. So if you are finding it difficult to play in a given key, let's say it was something ridiculous. You know, if it, it wouldn't even need to be something ridiculous, but as soon as you've got any black notes in there, it can be a bit difficult. So if you were playing in, um, let's say, E flat or something, You've only got three flats in there, but that's that's already difficult. So you could just change it to whatever key you want and it will play it. And it can also set the scale that you want to be in. So if you don't know what a C harmonic minor is, fortunately this does, and you can just play all the notes on the keyboard. Again, I'll put it on on-screen keyboard. So it's done our minor third there. And you get that sort of Egyptian sound that the harmonic minor does if you... If you just play it like that, etc. So there's some there's some interest to be created just from this, from it giving you some different harmonic options you may not be aware of. So major pentatonic. Don't want to play that too much because I'll get a copyright strike for that. Um, minor pentatonic, etc. So all those kind of things you may not have been aware of. You can you can experiment with them via this, and maybe you'll work out what they are. Maybe you'll just use it like it is. But there's there's loads to be gained just by experimenting with the scale and the arpeggio, and the two can be linked together. So you, the scale will feed into the arpeggio, so you can correct all your notes going into the arpeggio, etc. So that's a look at the features that you've got in terms of arpeggio and scale correction in Complete Control. I hope you found that useful, and I'll see you again soon.